Hi, I'm Steve Forey, and I'm the author of the American Casino Guide book. If you're not familiar with it, please be sure to visit our website at AmericanCasinoGuideBook.com. Joining me today is my son and the editor of the American Casino Guide book, Matt Forey. How's it going, everybody? And our video today is with casino consultant Bill Zender on five ways to legally make money in the casinos. Today uh, is the next part of our three-part series with uh, Bill Zender. And what he does is he's a consultant for casinos and he helps the uh, casinos from losing money from either cheaters or advantage players. And uh, how are you doing today, Bill? Hey, I'm doing great, Matt. You guys, uh, how are you guys doing down there? Pretty good. Good. And so the, if you saw the first video we did with Bill, it was on the Phil Ivey cheating scandal. And today what we're going to do is we're going to go over five ways to make money in the casinos legally. So let's uh, hop right into it. Uh, for the first one we're going to go over is going to be pretty easy and then it's going to get a little complex from there. So the first one is card counting. And uh, what can you tell us about that, Bill? Well, you know, card counting, is, it's like anything else. It's like any type of skill. You have to really practice it. You have to really study. It's like if I'm throwing darts, I have to practice it or I won't be good. Or if I'm playing golf, I have to practice. Same thing with card counting. And a lot of people like to veer away from it because they do have to put in so much time. Uh, but here's one thing about card counting. I can go into any North American casino that has table games and I can count, I could probably count cards profitably. Um, and that's something to, to consider. Um, it's, it, you'd, but you'd have to put in the time and you have to learn a system um, you know, to be able to do that. So it takes time. Okay. And uh, I guess uh, a lot of people like to find the easy way out. So a lot of people aren't probably going to like that answer. But now for those people that aren't familiar with what card counting is, can you just give us a quick rundown? Yes, it's uh, basically what, uh, what's been discovered decades ago was that in the game of blackjack, as you continually deal, you know, it's uh, whether you deal on your hand or deal on your shoe, is as the cards leave the shoe or the deck, uh, they indicate basically what cards are remaining. And if there's a surplus of high card, 10 cards and aces, it favors the player. And if there's not a surplus of 10s and aces, the house has the advantage. And what a card counter does is he sits there, and I'll give you an example. A six deck game, um, out, out of 100 hands, the card counter probably has the advantage. Actually, all players have the advantage between 20 and 25 hands, but the card counter knows when they occur. The regular player, he's sitting there having a drink with his girlfriend, talking to his friends and that. So he doesn't know that. But the person who's counting cards says, ha ha, I now have the advantage, so I'm gonna bet more. And, and that's like the nuts and bolts of, of card counting right there. All right, let, let me jump in here a, a little bit, please. Because now, Bill, I, I, we didn't mention the beginning, but you uh, are a consultant for casinos. Um, you specialize in table game protection. So you, you, part of your job is to protect casinos against uh, uh, card counters. But, so, so what is your feeling? And what do you tell the casinos if, uh, you know, they suspect someone's winning a lot of money on their counting cards and, and how would they be able to tell? Well, well, first of all, Steve, you and Matt are trying to get me in trouble again, like you did with Phil Ivey, but that's okay. I understand that. Um, the, uh, what you're trying to do, okay, with counting cards is, and I hope I'm going to answer your question correctly with this, is that you have to put so much money out there. You have to bet, you have to bet good money. You can make, you can uh, uh, nibble away at uh, at the lower end. You can bet, like let's say, bet ten dollars up to a hundred on a on a multiple deck game, a shoe game. I can actually make money. Now, how did casinos look at that? Casinos look at it as almost as the price of doing business. Casinos uh, treat card counting. They, they know it's not illegal, but they look at it as a nuisance, and they don't want people gaining an advantage. They want to keep the overall advantage. But even like when we were at the Aladdin, and then I'm going back into the 90s now, if a person was betting $5 you know, red chips or $25 green chips, I, we wouldn't even look at them, you know, because we looked at that as a, at the price of doing business. And we had games which would be considered very countable because of the fact that we would deal way down into the, into the shoe. 
Now, now, one of the things that people may not understand, the, the further you get, the, they call it penetration. So, so the further the deck is, the, the shoe is penetrated, the better it is for the card counter because they'll have a, 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 a closer idea of uh, how many good cards remain in the deck. So as you get down, if, it, if they dealt the whole thing out, there would be probably a good advantage for the uh, uh, card counter at the end because they would know how many uh, actual high cards or low cards are left. But, but one thing I wanted to ask about, uh, is it true now uh, for uh, a card count? I counted cards, I did it for four years, but I, I never bet a lot of money. I was just curious as to whether or not it worked. I said, you know, I'm writing this book, I go in a casino, spend a lot of time there, I should take the time and effort to do this. And I did it, I used the high-low. And I never made a big bet spread, maybe, you know, $5, $5 $10 to $50. And, and it did work. You know, I didn't make a lot of money and a little bit of money, but, but I'm going in there to have fun anyway. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. But the, uh, I think a lot of people think that you deviate from basic strategy in, 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 in uh, card counting, but you don't. Mostly you get your advantage by betting more when the deck is in your favor, correct? That's correct. And, you know, uh, I give classes to the casino people on this because believe it or not, they're not very knowledgeable either. Um, so one of the things I say is that out of every five hands, four of them, the, the professional, professional level card counter will play perfect basic strategy. And one hand out of five, they will deviate from basic strategy. And so it's not, it, you, you know, when I say multiple deck, I mean, two or more decks, two to eight decks. One deck is separate. But in a multiple deck game, you, you gain 70 to 80% of your advantage as a card counter from your bet spread. And the ones that can spread further actually gain a greater amount. You could actually, if you could spread far enough and get a high enough number of units, like you said, what, uh, $5? If you could go to five to $500, right? 100 to one spread, you wouldn't even have to deviate from basic strategy. Uh -huh. Huh. And, and for those people that aren't familiar, the spread that they're talking about is when you're counting cards, if the count is in the player's favor, you want to bet more money. And if the count is not in, in the player's favor, you want to bet as small amount of money as possible. So when it's a bad count, that's when you're going to bet your minimum, your $5. And then when the count gets extremely high, that's when you would go crank out as much money as you can. But the, the downside huh? to that is that uh, <laughs> just because you know how to count cards, generally there's probably someone in the casino that knows how to do it also. So if one hand you're betting the table minimum 10 bucks, you know, and then two, three hands later, you go from betting one, one hand to $10 to two hands of 500, a uh, little light bulb's going to go off in uh, the casino employee's head. So uh, the more aggressive you get in card counting, the more money you can make, but the more aggressive you get, uh, the shorter amount of time you're going to last in the casino. That, that's, that's I'm correct. sorry, Bill. Um, no, you go ahead, Steve. You're All right, well, I, 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 I want to go on to number two, but one last thing I wanted to say about card time. So number one, and a way to make money in casinos is by counting cards. But I tell people, you know, I, I did it. I've been there. I didn't do it, you know, betting a lot of money, but it's a lot of time. It's a lot of effort. Unless you're going to spend a lot of time in casinos, I don't think it's worth the time and effort to learn the count cards to try and make money in a casino. Because to do it accurately, you have to put a, invest a lot of time and effort into it. And it's really not worth it unless you're, you're gonna spend a lot of time in casinos. You know, one, one more wild card on sure. that is you have, to have a, you have to have a decent bankroll. Oh, true, yes. We're gonna go from $10 to 100, uh, which, you know, which is not a big spread. Most people wouldn't even be looked at for that. You would still have to have at least a $10,000 bankroll to be able mm -hmm. to do that. And that's another stumbling block. Right. We, we, we didn't get into that, but you don't always win as a card counter. You know, you have a very slight advantage and, and you're going to have terrible days where you lose lots of money. But, but anyway, that should give people an idea of, of one way to make money at a casino as counting cards. So let's move on to number two. Matt, what do you have for number two? All right. So number two is what's called hole carding. And that is when players use, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, a sloppy dealer. Uh, and they can see the face down cards uh, in the game as the dealer's dealing them. Uh, so, Bill, uh, you want to hop into this? I believe we have a, a PowerPoint that you did. Uh, do you want me to pull that up now or do you want to? Uh, why don't we wait two seconds? I'll, okay. let, I'll let you know. Is it um, playing whole card? See, 
one of the things, as long as you're in the casino walking around, uh, you can look for sloppy dealers and it doesn't take a real expert to be able to pick this out. And I'll show you why here in a second. But gaining the dealer's whole card is a big advantage because that's one of the secrets. There's two secrets in blackjack. One is the dealer's whole card. One is the next card off the top of the deck. But we can legally get the whole card if the dealer sloppy and reveals it. Go ahead and put that uh, PowerPoint up, uh, Matt. Okay, let's see here. Now what you're gonna see once this comes up is this is a shoe game. And it's, a, I'll tell you where it was. It was the old Riviera because it's closed now. And the dealer is bringing the cards out of the shoe. Actually, that's a continuous shuffle machine, but shoe, continuous shuffle machine, doesn't matter. Um, you can see the value of the card. Now, do me a favor, advance one, one slide. Oh, hang on. Okay. Now, when I've got circles, you can see the value. Okay. Now, the funny part about this is this camera is not at table level. This camera is is a, is a uh, pan tilt zoom camera that's actually in the ceiling. Now it's a little ways away from the table and they're zooming in, that's why it's so blurry. But you can see the value of the card. If you would have told me I could do this with a, with a ceiling camera and a shoe game, I would say you were crazy. Now go one more slide. Now, now I'm gonna show you what to look for. So you're walking through the casino, you're minding your own business. Um, you look at the dealers dealing the shoe game. Now you see where the dealer's thumb is? The thumb is actually underneath the card. Anytime, and I'm gonna hold my hand up. Anytime you see that dealer's thumb next to the playing card, then you could possibly get the whole card in a shoe game. The dealer, when they're dealing and pulling the card out of the shoe, has their thumb completely away from the cards. But if you walk by and you see a dealer with their thumb either against the side of the card or a little bit underneath it, there's a good chance that you could see that card. Now, what kind of information does that give me? Well, think about it. If the dealer's got a 10 up and I look and I see him put a six in a hole, he's got a bustable hand. And I can do all kinds of things. Uh, I can double down on practically anything. I can split everything. Um, I would stand on a 12 against a 10. Normally I'd hit that, see? So the information you're gaining is gonna change your strategy. Now, if you're sitting at the table, uh, as a player, and you want to take advantage of this, I would assume you'd have to be one of the last, uh, in, in third base, they call it, the last person to play their hand. Advance the slide one more. And this, and Steve's, Steve's pointed out a really important factor. The person who's going to read it's going to be sitting in that last seat. Now, if you're in there as an individual, what you do is you sit down and you try to sit down as low as you can by pushing your chair back away from the table and kind of like acting like your tires, slunch down a little bit. And the lower you get, the better view of the card. But if you could read it, read the dealer's whole card 100% of the time, and you use the strategy, and you can go right online and find these, just put down whole card strategy for blackjack on the search engine that gives you a whole strategy how to play this, you could actually gain somewhere around a 10% advantage. Wow. When Matt and Steve and I were talking about card counting, we were only talking about gaining a 1% advantage. This could be a 10%. And even conservatively, if you've seen the card two thirds of the time and, and made a mistake every once in a great while, you can still play with about 5% edge. Now, one thing I need to point out here is Bill had said when he was talking about card counting that the casinos viewed that as a nuisance. Casinos really do not take kindly to card counting. They sort of take it personally. So if you think you have a, wait, a wait, high wait. chance. You're, you're, I'm sorry, you're, you're talking about whole carding? They don't yes. take kindly to whole carding? Yes, oh, they don't okay. take kindly to whole carding. They really do not uh, uh, appreciate that from what I've heard from uh, some uh, advantage player uh, friends that I have. <laughs> Well, one one I, story I heard. Doing it. <laughs> yeah, one one story I heard is that there was a guy like you said you you got to sit lower to the table. The lower to the table you get, the easier it is. So the dude had uh, was in a wheelchair. He had brought a wheelchair <laughs> with him to the casino and wheeled his way in up to the blackjack table. So that way he was low and he could see the cards. And uh, what happened was, is the casino got mad at him, realized what he was doing, and they went to go throw him out. And he got up out of the wheelchair and ran out of the casino. <laughs> A little side story. We had a guy down in the hotel in Nevada walked, came up in a wheelchair, sitting really low on that side of the table, on the third base side of the table. Well, it was a pitch game. 
Well, that'd be on a right-handed pitcher, right? Right-handed dealer. So we did is and dealer coming in, we put a left-hander in. Yeah. And then he got right up and wheeled away. I mean, he stayed in his wheels. Uh, <laughs> okay, now, uh, blackjack is not the only thing that you can uh, hole card in. It's uh, That's, I think, a little bit more complicated. Uh, if we, You can do it with some of the other uh, carnival games, as I like to call them, too, like uh, three-card poker, uh, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, and Mississippi Stud, right? That's correct. Those are the, those are the three big ones. And um, I believe that that strategy is much more straightforward because you're just, you're getting like, if you're, let's go to this. Uh, yeah, so this three. is like on three card poker here, what you were talking about. Well, this, this is ultimate Texas. Oh, ultimate Texas. Hold them. Oh yeah. Oh, there are five cards there, aren't there? But here's the, the thing is that this is a great picture and the guy, you notice the guy sitting there at the table, he's playing ultimate Texas hold them. And, and let me explain really quick. What the dealer does is the first thing the dealer does is put five cards down on the table. They spread them out. And those will be the community cards. The second thing the dealer reaches into that machine and it's kind of down in a well and pulls out the two cards for the player because there's only one player hand here. And then she reaches down and she pulls out her cards and puts them down in front of her. Now, it just happens, this guy, slight, advance one slide, will you please, Matt? Mm -hmm. This guy, look where he's sitting. Matter of fact, he, where his eyes are right on where she's coming out with that with those cards and if you notice his arm and his armpit are right on the rim of the table okay mm -hmm. and you can see his foot he's got his foot on a chair so he's positioned so he can see her see the, her cards what he is in this one picking up he's picking one card up from the community cards that she's picking out she has those five cards on the table oh the he's, bottom card exactly we're getting that bottom card and then she's getting the bottom card of the two cards that she picks out for herself. He care less about, you know, his hand or anybody else's hand. Um, go ahead and advance to the next slide, Matt. Mm -hmm. Now here's the three ones. And, and like what Steve said it, the first one, the top one is three card poker. And so let's say that I see a dealer that's getting sloppy, pulling the cards out. And I can pick up one of the cards. He's got three cards. As long as it's not a queen, king, or ace, I stay in on any hand I have. Because in three card poker, you make an ante bet, you get your three cards, and then you make your call bet, okay? Now, that's your, your only choice is to make it or not make the call bet. Mm -hmm. In most cases with a, with a garbage hand, you have three unrelated cards. There's no flush, there's no pairs. There's no straight with those three cards. You would throw the hand in. But if I can see the dealer coming out of, the, out of that well with his cards, then I can see that, that none of the cards are a queen, king, or ace, which happens to be a qualifier for the dealer. Dealer gets dealer. If he makes a qualifier, then you play against the dealer. If he can't make a qualifier, which is if he has a jack high or less, then you automatically get paid on your ante. Okay? So that's when you would stay in. You would stay in if you did not see a queen, king, or ace. It's a very simple strategy. The other two are quite complicated, but I just want to show you the games. Um, in Ultimate Texas Hold'em, that guy we just looked at, he was gaining about a 20% advantage on that because he was getting to see the cards 100% of the time. But one card from the community and one card from her hand. But all you saw was just one of the two dealer cards. You're still playing with a 14% advantage, which is 14 times stronger than card counting, right? Mm -hmm. Now, course, now you say that you say that's uh, more complicated, but it's it's a little bit intuitive too, because like say in Ultimate Texas Hold'em, if you have a hand, what it is is you can go in four times your original bet pre-flop before you see any of the mm -hmm. community cards. So if you have a garbage hand like a, a ten seven, but you see that there's a seven in the community or a ten in the community that you've paired up, mm -hmm. you're gonna bet you're gonna bet more money before you're gonna put in that four times uh, when you know that you're paired up early, you know. Well, see, Matt, the reason I'm saying that is three card, three card, you have to know a, a basic strategy and a oh, very yeah. conservative strategy is uh -huh. a pair Queen, better. You know. uh -huh. Queen six, four or better is this, yeah, the Queen strategy six, I've heard. Better is what it is. I said very conservative would be one uh -huh. pair. Uh -huh. Ultimate Texas Hold'em is a little bit different because you're going to have to know uh, Ultimate Texas Hold'em playing strategy. Yeah. Just in case you don't see the card. Okay. Yeah. And that's then true. you're going to have to understand how to play optimally. Mm -hmm. So the cards you do see mm -hmm. in, in Mississippi stud, I'm going to just say one real quick thing. We can move on to the next one. Mississippi stud. If I see one of the community cards, I've guaranteed a 50% edge. Now, 
50, 80, 90, if I can see all three of them, I got four fingers up there. If I can see all three of them, I get 90% advantage. And the reason why is you can bet in multi multitudes of what your original bet was. You can, mm -hmm. you can have 10 units out there. Um, so that's a real, that's a real strong game. But if for somebody just starting out, I say, go, go look at uh, three card poker and, and, and see what you can find there. All right, so, so that's number two. But now I, I have a question on this one for you, Bill. Place. So so what do you tell the what do you tell the casino um, about their dealers? Do you, you just say they have to be on the lookout for it, and do they have to be retrained how to properly deal? What what did they were they were trained properly one time and they just got sloppy through the years? There you go. See, they get, they they probably were trained properly and then they got sloppy. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, the video the picture that you saw the guy sitting on the table that uh, the dealer on the table was considered one of their premier dealers. And she just got sloppy over the, over the year, course of the year. Uh -huh. Okay. I, just, I was, yeah, I was just wondering how, how it was handled from the perspective of, of the casino side of, of, of the issue. And, and I have to say, I never ever did a uh, whole card. Uh, that was an area I, I never, I had heard about it. I heard many stories about it, but I never got into it myself. Okay, so that's another way. That's number two. You can uh, hold card. Uh, number three, we're going to talk about match play and free play coupon chips. Yep. So you, so you might as well just bring Matt, Go ahead and bring that slide up. Well, that first okay. slide. No, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but before we say this, let me say like we have uh, coupons in our book. So we we have match play, and and, and we'll, uh, let me just give a quick, I guess, explanation of a match play. So there's different kinds of chips. Match play generally, uh, you match, you got a $10 match play, you add your own $10. If you win, the casino will pay you $20. Usually it's only available, offered on, uh, on even money bets. So, so that's a match play, but th there are other types of, of uh, also called free play, but maybe you can get into some of those, please. Okay, and you know, you're right. And you know what, usually with the match play, uh, it's called, it's a coupon. It's usually a paper coupon and it's usually in like a book that you have or, or casinos would just give it away sometimes as a promotion. Uh, we want to sign you up to our club. We'll give you a hundred dollars worth of match play, $10 of a match play coupon. Uh, but the thing is, these things are worth something to us uh, as a player and you need to use them. If somebody's going to give you match play or they're going to give you a free pay play coupon or chip, take it and use it because it's money in your pocket. Now, what we did, at rule of thumb, is anytime you have match play or you have free play, it's, it's half the face value. That's what it is, half the face value. So the exact numbers, and I got this out of uh, James Groshen's book, uh, actually his white paper did called Beyond, Beyond Coupons. And in it, the first area there, the red box is a blackjack player, the average player uh, playing a six deck blackjack game. I walk up to the table on my match play. It's a ten dollars, so I throw my ten dollars and up my match play. Now I'm either going to win twenty uh, if they pay blackjacks, I might win twenty five, or I'm going to lose ten. Right. So basically, uh, I, I, if we used to call them twofers in the old days. You get two for one. So I'm either going to win like maybe you know ten. If I bet ten twenty dollars and I lose ten, so I'm losing only like half value. So basically. Uh, you take the decimal point, move it over 48%. So you're looking at making 48% on the face value. $10 coupon, I'm making $4.80. Now, right? now uh, let me hop in here. So normally, normally, like what you said, the value of a match play coupon is half the face value. So if you have a $10 match play coupon, it's worth $5. But then you got to subtract out the house edge of the game that you're playing, correct? Well, in a way, um, that's why I used to do it until I read Grosjean's paper. And basically, you have to take all the number of events where you win and all the number of events where you lose and where you tie and the rest of it. And it, and it actually, if you took the house advantage off there, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. I mean, it wouldn't be that, that value. Um, so it, there's a little bit more complicated, but that, the, the way you look at it is match play, a little bit less than half, and you're in the ballpark. The, 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 you notice the free play. You know, match play is this. Match play, we put... We, we put a value with a, with a coupon and we get paid two for one, all right? Mm -hmm. In free play, they give us a coupon with value or a chip with value. If we lose it, we lose nothing. But if we win, we win the value of that chip. Now, if I get a $10 free play, I put the $10 chip out there 
And if it wins, I get paid $10, they take my chip, you know, my free play chip. If I lose, they just take the free play chip. So basically what you're doing is you're, 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 you're venturing nothing to win something in that. So it's a little bit, the free play is a little bit more, uh, gives you a little bit better return. So we're Because you're not, you're not risking any, wagering any real money. No, see, that's the thing. That's the big thing there. Where a match play, $10 match play makes you $4.82. The free play makes you $4.94. So it's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. right? and, and the thing is, is you pointed out something, Steve, uh, that you usually, I think it was Steve said it, that you play these on even money bets. Well, there, when people, a lot of casinos have gone crazy with match play. They throw it away. The state of Washington set all kinds of records with uh, match play. If anybody's living up there who's watching your presentation knows, they go, oh, yeah, we're the, we're the home of match play up here. So they're letting them play it on basically anything. Okay. Wow. If oh, yeah. I never heard of that before. Huh. Yeah, that's, yeah. It didn't happen until last 20. Go ahead and advance one slide. Okay, now if I'm given a choice with my $10 match play, the, the, mo the one I want to bet on is I want to bet straight up one number on roulette because my return on it is no longer $4.80. It's now $8.68. Almost twice as good. Well, yes, it's twice as good. But see, the thing is your hit frequency is yeah, very low. Yeah, it's streakier, yeah. But in the long run, in the long run, you're going to make more money by betting on a roulette. And another, and another one here, craps on on a uh, on the uh, let's say you bet the twelve. Thirty to one. I was going to say that's that snake eyes and box cars, right? Which is yeah, uh, that's it. So I had one I one the, or six six. There you go. Yeah. So the thing is, again, that's high. And then the other one, the baccarat tie. So you can see that, and and you know one thing that roulette's similar. Roul all the roulette bets are the same house advantage, but you know the baccarat is like you know, 10 times greater, you know, it's at 14% house advantage. But when you bet the coupon, it doesn't matter about the house advantage. This is what you were saying about the house advantage being out there, is it's because it's, you're getting the multiple payoff. That's what I was just going to say. It's interesting that these bets that you've highlighted are normally terrible bets that you would never make in a casino. There's some of the higher end house edge bets, but it, I guess because of the coupon, it becomes the bets you want to make them on. I've been in a lot of arguments with casino executives about this. And it says, no, you got to understand it's a little bit different, you know, mechanics for this. Mm -hmm. Three card poker, you notice at the bottom, any bet, pairs plus, uh -huh. the play or the ante, you can bet it and it's and it's higher than 50%. Hmm. You know? Now, when, when I was talking before about the book, our, our book, American Casino Guide book, which we been putting out for uh, 28 years, except we ran into a problem with the pandemic this year. But uh, we would always, well, for years, I would go to Vegas and, and I would write an article. We had coupons in the book, uh, uh, you know, match play coupons. We didn't, I don't think we had free play, but I always had match plays. And we would do something called a coupon run. And, and, and you'd start at one end of town and go to the other end of town and just use all these. Use every single coupon in the book. Use all the coupons. And it would take, it would take you know, six, six to eight hours. And uh, you'd run all these places. But I always said, well, it was fun because you got to see a lot of casinos. You got to gamble. And, and we would only use the coupon to go in, make the bet, and then leave. Yeah. And we never lost money. We always made money. Well, year after it. year after year. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's hard. Well, the math is there. You can see it, it's hard to lose money. I mean, and this year we have coupons in the book this year. So if anyone wants to try using a match play coupon, gosh, we must have about uh, 15, 20 of them in the book. Now, this, this, I'm still I'm still very interested by this at the bottom, because uh, like like we said earlier, our match plays are, are mostly in Nevada and you can only use them on even money bets. Uh, and normally we go and we'd sit at a roulette table and just bet it on red, black, odd, even, high, low, you know, but I, it looks to here like I'm going to start using it on the three card poker table from now on. Yeah, if you can. <laughs> if you well, can. I mean, the ante, the ante and the player both uh, even money bets. So, right. And, and, the, and, the, and, and when you have the ante, the ante is, you remember, sometimes there's, a, there's no qualifier. Mm -hmm. um, the play you're only making a play bet was when you have a good hand. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that's why those two are. Uh, oh those. well, I guess those do have they do have a side bet kind of built into them where you get more money if you get a good hand. That's probably where that more that higher payoff comes from. You're right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Right. And let me ask you one other thing because years ago I went out at the one that we showed a, a picture from the Riviera years ago. I had gone on a uh, uh, stay there for like three nights and they had this thing called a gambler spree package where you, you pay them like, you know, $500 and they give you $600 in non-negotiable chips. And, and you could play them just like a regular chip. But, and, and if you won, they'd give you a regular chip back. And, and uh, once you eventually lost it, they, they'd keep it. So I always thought that was a good deal because, you know, I'm getting $600 worth of chips for $500 or, or whatever it was. But, but, and those seem to be uh, around a lot of casinos years ago, but they stopped uh, using them. Well, the GSP, I mean, that's what I call it, game, uh, Gambler's uh, uh, Spree, is uh, what we used to make money on it, but we didn't make money on the people qualified. You qualified. So you got all the, you got the, the, the free play chips and you probably got food credits and you probably got a room mm -hmm. credit. We made money off the people that played up to that, but never hit the qualification level. So it was really good for the casinos because it was a fishing trip. Uh -huh. We could look, we'd, we'd have a, a, we had to make a, a minimum bet of $25. That was our, our premium plan. And we'd see a guy like that and we would say, oh, that guy's a, he shouldn't be on that program. He's a, you know, he's a good player. So we would actually get the host to pull them off the program. So we use it as a fishing trip. So it worked out really good for the casinos. And it also worked out for guys like you who figured out that if you disqualified, hit the qualifications for it, you could you could get all those bonuses. So it was a, it was actually two-edged sword. But, but nobody uses them anymore? No, Not at the casinos? Not that I know of. And, I, and the thing was, is that this, you remember this is, we're going way back, buddy. This uh -huh. is back before computers were king. And now everybody's got player rating. You come in with your loyalty card. We just, we do you off the loyalty card. We take care of it. Okay. You come to me, he goes, uh, hey, Bill, I'm looking for my room comp. Okay. I run you up. Oh, I see you got only three hours at uh, $15. Sorry. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Go gamble some more. We'll, we'll give you All right. I think we're ready to move on here. But one last thing I wanted to say about uh, match play and, uh, and uh, free play is that you have a mathematical advantage over the casino whenever you use this. So the casino knows that, so they limit you. You can't go in there with you know, a stack of 50 uh, match play ch uh, coupons and expect to sit there. The casino is probably gonna let you do it maybe one time per day or one time per week or one time per 30 days. Yes, they'll let you take an advantage, make an advantage play over them at this, but you can usually you're limited to just once a day or whenever. You know, you know, Steve, things have changed because like in Washington State, mm -hmm. I had a woman give me a sheet with 10 $100 match plays on it. Okay. Did she want, want to play them all? One she gave time? it to me. She gave it to me. I was using it for one of my, one of my classes uh -huh. that I was teaching, you know, I was teaching on promotions. And I said, this is, this is worth 500, about, you know, $490. She says, oh, I get one every other week. Wow. And they're coming right from their mail to her, right from the casino. So there are some That's places. insane. I, it is. Jesus. <laughs> it, is. it is. Wow. They, they weren't making any money up in Washington State. But what will happen is what you, you find a casino that's getting, doing some kind of promotion. where they, the, do they, know, they still do that in Washington State? I might have to make a trip. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere. Just land anywhere. Look for a card club. Not a casino. Not uh, a Native American casino. A card club. Gotcha. All right. So is this the end of your presentation now? Uh, yeah, that's the end of that. Okay. All right. Back to us talking. All right. So now, um, next. You're on number four, Matt. Okay. Uh, number four is, uh, when casinos have bad promotions, everybody, everybody loves these. All the players love these the casinos probably bad. don't love them that much. They're not bad for the players. They're bad yeah. for the casinos. Yes. Yeah. They're great, I mean, great promotions that. for the players. It's based on bad math. Right. And, uh, a, a great example of this is when a casino, some casino manager somewhere wants to uh, get people in door and he decides to pay two to one on blackjack. Oh, that was my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, did you ever hear in Biloxi they had a they had a promotion on Father's Day, 
and they were going to, for the whole day, pay two to one on blackjack up to, and I believe it was $100. You could bet up to $100. Now, in the old days, Binion's used to do a special right before Christmas, two to one on blackjacks for bets of $5 or less. And they only they had $2 games in those days, so you could bet $2, $3, $5. Um, and we used to go in there and play every year and drink Heineken beer and, you know, put it on autopilot, you know, all the professionals. Now, think about that. In Biloxi, they were going to go up to $100. They referred to it as the Father's Day Massacre <laughs> because they were they lost several hundred thousand dollars to this promotion. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, can you ex can you explain the math how, how how it changes the math in the game of blackjack by going from uh, three to two to two to one on for paying for blackjack? Right. It's a gain to the players of 2.3 percent. Okay. So let's say that. The average game is a half percent house advantage. You take the, you take that off of there, and you talk about a, a, a advantage of right around 1.8 percent, which is double what you would get for counting cards. So basically, what they did was they do the two for one. They just take the table and slide it around like this, and now you're the house, and they're the player, mm -hmm. and that's basically what they did. And that's the just on basic strategy, right? That's not even counting yeah. cards or anything. Basic strategy. Matter of fact. If you, if, if I brought my mom in, my mom was still alive and she played like, you know, um, I, I, I think I should hit it. It's a 17. Even if I brought my mom in, she would have the advantage. I mean, that, that's how much that gain is to you. And you could bet, not Nick, not $5, up to 100. So these people were in there betting $100, $100, you know, I mean, this is going crazy. Minus. Okay, so now this happens because casinos, somebody in the casino comes up with this idea and, and they don't run the, the, the math. Right. And, and that, that's really, they should call someone like you who's familiar, casino consultant, familiar with the math, so you can run the math through and say, yes, it's a good idea. No, it's a bad idea. But what, now what about the triple down promotion at Mohegan's well, Sun? Yeah. How'd that well, one work? the sweet ones now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The triple down, that was, an, I mean, say East Coast Casino, a very major East Coast Casino, and they decided to do this thing called triple down on blackjack. And you said they should call me. Well, I had a commissioner from the, because it was a tribal casino, one of the commissioners from the tribe called me up and he said, I don't like this promotion. We're going to run it in about three days. And I said, what is it? It goes, it's triple down on, on blackjack up to the limit. And I said, tell me more about it. And is, I'm going to the airport, like in Denver or someplace where you walk forever. And he's telling me, and I said, here's what I told him. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let me get home. Let me figure out some math on this and I'll get back to you, but it's going to be terrible. Well, in their defense, they went ahead and got someone to, uh, you know, basically do the mathematics for him. But they applied it to the hold percentage. It was like about a, almost a 2% change. And when marketing sold it to general manager, they, they used the hold percentage, which, you know, is a much higher figure. And so it's only going to reduce the hold percentage by 2%. No, it's going, to it's going to reduce the house advantage by 2%. And I'm saying approximately, because there were some changes of the plays in that. So... Be, I, I, next day, I talked to this commissioner on the phone, and he says, I've talked to marketing. They don't want to do it because they think it'll make the casino look bad, okay? Well, their, their identification of look bad and mine are two different. Uh, they were going to run it for a whole month. They ran it for a little over a day, and from my understanding, it cost them close to a million dollars. Wow. Uh -huh. And. From what I understand, when you if you walk through the casino, you would look around and it was like every advantage player on the East Coast, some of them from the West Coast and most of them from the Midwest. So, now, let me ask you. Years ago, I used to uh, there was a publication called Blackjack Horror Magazine, which I used to enjoy. It came out I think quarterly, and it was uh, for people interested in, in card counting and blackjack and advantage play and blackjack. And they had one, was it surprise party at the Klondike? Did you, did you ever hear that story about the Klondike? Yeah. And, and that was a tiny casino, but yeah. someone there did a promotion with bad math. Do you remember that one by any chance? Yeah, it was the, uh, the, free and, the free surrender. 
Oh, the, the lammer. They would give you a lammer yeah. or some surrender. Yeah, okay. you a lammer. What you did is if you're playing and you got a blackjack, you would get paid your blackjack and they give you a lammer. And the thing, there's a little bit of, uh, of urgency to get rid of that lammer because you couldn't let them stack up. If you had a lammer of free surrender uh, you, and you had another blackjack, you couldn't get another lammer. So you're trying to get rid of them. And you figure that uh, a very, I mean, it's really funny, but only a small percentage of the hands you receive are actually in your favor as a player. And most of them are in house's favor. So if you look at all the, the hands that are in the house's favor, you had a list of them and you memorized them, which actually should do your hands better, is that you got rid of the lammer as soon as you got one of those bad hands. You wouldn't, you wouldn't surrender a real good hand. You'd surrender one that you I mean, by, by free surrender, I assume you got your whole bet back instead of just half? Your whole bet back. Oh, wow. Wow. And um, that one, I, I, can't, I can't remember the uh, advantage on that, but the fact is that your average for every time you surrender is 35%. On an average negative hand. And if you divide that by, let's say you get a blackjack every what, 21 hands, right? Winning blackjack. Um, so you're talking like 1.75 uh, player advantage. And if the house is a half a percent, you're making a buck and a quarter for playing basic strategy. And these guys were in there was a $200 limit at the time at the Klondike. And, he, and the, the guy that came up with it was a graveyard chip boss. And he comes in that night, they started it, thinking he's going to get like one or two tables. They had six tables, by the way. He walks in the door, all six are gone, black chips everywhere. Security's walking around with a handful of money trying to buy $100 chips back from the players because the cage has run out of $100 chips. Now, the, the big key here is if you have a promotion and you walk in the door and the place is packed, you've probably done something <laughs> Well, that's sort of like Jean Scott, you know, Jean Scott, the queen of comps, because yeah. she's an advantage player. And she always said, you know, if, if, I, if I'm playing in your casino, you should know that something's wrong. <laughs> so so it, it, it's nice. interesting, similar situation. Yeah. So, uh, so now those were uh, three good examples of the bad promotion uh, where the, the math was off. So they are very rare to find. They're certainly not as easy, you know, as becoming a card counter or uh, a hole carding. So these are rare, but they do um, on occasion happen. And we're going to go on to uh, number five, which is another rare occurrence, but, but these probably, do happen. Probably an even more rare occurrence. Mm -hmm. And this is when there's just a straight up mistake by the casino on a game. Uh, there's two great examples of this. One is kind of well known. It's known as the the sick bow incident. I believe Stanford Wong wrote about it, didn't he? Uh, he did. It was back in 1994. I was he, five years old at the time. He used to put out a newsletter, and he would uh, he would fax it to people back then. He said, "Well, you should go to the Grand Casino in Biloxi, Mississippi, and you should uh, go to the sick bow." Now, sick bow is a game played with uh, three dice. And, and they uh, uh, turn, the, it's like a chuckle luck. They turn, it's just, I think, sometimes it's uh, computerized, but it's the total of three dice. So the yeah. bet he said you should make is you should bet four and 17 because yeah. the true odds were 71 to one, but they made a mistake on the layout and it's was paying 80, um, 80 to one, and it should have said 60 to one. So it's paying $20, 20 uh, more for your dollar. Instead of paying 60 to one, paid 81. And, and Bill, I think you had some more information on this. Well, you see me laughing over here. Uh -huh. is that I understand how that happened. And the backstory of that was that Mississippi, you know, Mississippi came along, they were like the fourth or fifth location. And what they did was they tried to emulate Nevada in the regulations. And then they were trying to emulate other casinos and, you know, throughout the country, in North America, which was Atlantic City couple of them in the Midwest at that time. And uh, one of the guys, one of the executives had worked in Atlantic City. So they went before the Mississippi uh, uh, gaming board and said, we want to put in you know, Chuck Luck and or sick ball, excuse me, same game. And they said, we want to, we, we think it's going to take off and it's really big in Atlantic City. And so they, what they did was the, the guy, the executive that did his idea, he called his buddy up and says, do you have a copy of the layout? And he says, I do. 
And what I'll do is I'll take a photocopy of it and send it to you. So when he sends them the photocopy and they get it in Mississippi, probably faxed in those days, they're looking at it. And instead of seeing it as a 60 to one, they read it as 80 to one. Yeah. And that's what happened. So it was approved by the state and everybody else. And it went on the floor. And the first day it did good. And the second day you couldn't find a seat. Uh, the third day people were shoving and pushing and trying to get up to the table because the word had got out uh, that they, uh, that was the problem. And I can't remember how long they ran for it, but it was, it was, it was a disaster. Mm -hmm. I think they lost several hundred thousand dollars. I forget the exact amount, but that, that, that is one example of just an outright casino mistake. And uh, Matt, you have a friend who yeah, uh, I had was a able friend. to take advantage of it. Yeah, a friend of mine told me about this. He was actually a card counter and he was on a cruise ship. I believe he said it was a, a I forget the cruise line, but uh, he had been playing uh, blackjack and he had been card counting and he was two or three days into the trip and he said he was already getting some heat. So he stopped, he stopped playing to take a break because he didn't want to get thrown out in the middle of the uh, cruise because it was a seven day cruise. He had like three, four days left, you know, and he said what he did was he was walking around and he walks out to the pool deck and they had uh, one of the big six wheels, the big wheel that you spin and it has all the dollar bills on it. And generally it has the, the one dollar bill, the two dollar bill, the five dollar bill, the ten dollar bill, and it pays whatever that number is. If it's a ten dollar bill, it pays ten to one. And then what they do is they have two symbols that pay 40 to one. And generally what it is, is one is like the logo of the casino. And then the other one is like an Eagle or something. And they're two different symbols, yeah. but he noticed that both of these symbols on the, on the game were the same symbol and they were both paying 40 to one. And he's like, that doesn't sound right. And he's, he said he, he went back to his room and this was back in the day. He got out the pen and paper and sat there and did the math and said, Oh my God, I need to go play this game right now. And uh, he said, generally, uh, he, he had done the math with, I called him to, to double check the facts with him. So there's 54 spots on the table. Two of them are 40 to one. And if they're different, that means every 54 spins, you're going to lose 13 bucks. So it's a 24% disadvantage on that bet normally on a table that works. If the two symbols are the same. He said, you're going to win $40 every 27 spins and you're going to lose 26 spins. Uh, you're going to lose 26 to win 40. So he has a, he had a 51.85% advantage. And he said he sat down immediately and just bet the table max and just started hammering this table away. And he said the worst, it, it was a hundred dollar minimum or a hundred dollar max. So he was betting a hundred dollars. So 40 to one, he was winning $4,000 every time. He said he hit it on the immediate first spin. He sat down. And then he hit it two more times in the next four spins and was up $16,000 in like a matter of five spins. And then he said that uh, he went 115 spins before he hit it again. And he said that uh, it got so bad that he, he completely cleared out the chip rack three times and they had to call the, the casino downstairs and have them bring up more chips three times because he won so much money. But he said at the end of the trip, because of that dry spell, the 115 spins in the middle, he said he only won $16,000. Then he, he said he went out the next day and they, the table was, they were uh, stripping it down and, and taking it apart. They had the maintenance people there taking it apart when he went to go play the next day. So uh, I think they might've caught their mistake. All right, did, did you have one you wanted to throw in there, Bill? Uh, well, the only thing that I, I, I want to talk about, I'm not gonna name the manufacturer, it was actually, it wasn't a table game. It was, well, it was a crap game uh, that they have the two dice inside a dome with a, with a diaphragm and they, and they jiggle them and then boom, and you could bet on it. And uh, a guy that I know up in Colorado had noticed that when the one die got up against, ended up stopped against the side of the, uh, of the dome, that the, the die would not turn over. So by doing that, instead, you know, with two dice, you, you're any, any combination is one over 36. But when you have one die that's not going to turn over, it just moved around and spun around, but never turned over, it, it changes everything to one over six. And he ended mm -hmm. up playing that and beating, the, beating that game until they figured out what he was doing. So, wow. so, so again, they, these are rare things. Well, this particular one, casino mistakes are rare. 
but they do happen. So be aware that that it could happen. And uh, just to reiterate now, we, we had these five ways to make money in casinos. I tend to think the most practical way for the average person is to use a match play or free play chip because you don't, you don't have to have any knowledge at all. You just have a mathematical advantage over the casino whenever you use a coupon like that. So, so of these five tips, that would be the most practical. Maybe number two, card counting, would you say? That's a lot of work. Or hole carding. Maybe hole carding above. Any thoughts, guys? You know, hole carding is um, one, one of the things that it, you, it's going to take some work. Free, you know, like you said, match play and free play. That's a no-brainer. You can walk out mm -hmm. just as long as you don't stay there too long. You know what I'm saying? The table blow all that money back. Uh, but hole carding really works well because you've got that you've got the the higher advantage, but you still have to put time into it. You still have to put, you know, you got to find the dealer. I would definitely say of all these whole carding, whole carding a three card poker table. If you can find a casino that has the dealing procedures that would allow it is probably going to be the easiest way to make money. But uh, at least near me, the casinos now they use uh, when they're dealing the cards out, they have a cut card on the bottom of the dealer's cards so that you can't see it. So uh, that's going to that's going to nip that in the bud right there. But if you can find a casino that has that doesn't use the cut card on the bottom, which is just a, a plain plastic insert so that it blocks it, they do that so you can't see it. If you can find a casino that doesn't use those, then, yeah, if you can if you can uh, get a card or two on three card poker, that'd be great. All right. That was great. Uh, talking about five ways to make money in casinos. Bill, if people want to get more information about you and, and perhaps your company, Bill Sender and Associates, how would they do that? Well, then you go to my website, and that's Bill Zender, one word, B I L L Z E N D E R dot com. Uh, or they can email me, which is wzender at aol.com. All right, great. Thanks very much for being with us, Bill. Thank you, guys. Okay, take care. Okay, so that does it for our video on the five best ways to make money in the casinos. If you liked it, uh, give it a thumbs up, please. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Let us know what you think and hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on any of our other great videos. Yeah, and don't forget, we have another website, AmericanCasinoBonuses.com. If you like to play at internet casinos, this is a chance to go out and try all these uh, offers where you don't have to put in any credit card information. You don't have to deposit any money. We have at least uh, uh, about 25 to 30 different offers out there. You can try them out. It won't cost you anything. Again, AmericanCasinoBonuses.com. Thanks very much for watching and best wishes for good luck in the casinos.